everyone and welcome to the video we're going to be walking through a brand new cubase pro template which is now available on the poundsound.uk web store i'll put a link in the description box below if you want to go check it out now this template has been built to work with Cine samples core library so that includes Cine brass core Cine strings core Cine winds core and Cine perk so if you own all those libraries and you want to get up and running quickly without any setup time involved, then this is going to be the template for you. The entire library has been set up in two ways. So we have split articulations for those of you that prefer having single patches loaded into single instances of a sampler. And for the split articulations, all of the instrument tracks have had their negative time delay values applied. So what this means is that when you work with any orchestral libraries and if you snap a MIDI to a grid, say you're not very good at playing live or you haven't got a keyboard, when you play the project back, the latency will throw the samples out of timing a little bit. So you always find that when you're working with orchestral libraries, if you don't use time delay, you'll be doing things like adjusting the MIDI like this um, to compensate for that latency of when the actual uh, note comes in so it brings it all back in time and makes everything lock together better so for split articulations as i say i've gone through the entire library and applied these to each of the instruments and patches there may be a couple of things that you might need to slightly adjust to your taste with it but it's in the ballpark and it will save you a hell of a lot of time now for those of you that like working with key switches and expression maps i've mapped out all of the articulation patches from the libraries and built the expression maps to control the articulation changes and applied those to the tracks. These can all be found in the key switches folder at the top here. And you'll see when you select one of the tracks and come to the expression map window, you'll see that these have already been applied. Now to work with expression maps in Cubase with this template is really simple. Um, all you do is you record in your MIDI performance or score in some MIDI notes. And then you basically just draw in the articulation changes from the articulations and dynamics lane at the bottom here. If this doesn't show up for you, all you need to do is click on the plus symbol and select articulations and dynamics. It's also probably a good idea for you to add the other lanes that you may need to use to control the library. So CC1 for modulation, um, CC7 for your main volume and CC11 for expression and any other CCs that you wish to use. Now, once you've drawn in the articulation changes and you press play, you'll notice that Cubase will trigger the different changes for the patch. Now, the only downside to working with um, instruments that contain a patch with many articulation changes is there's no real way to combat the latency differences between each of the articulations like you can do with a split um, patch template. So for the key switches, you will need to massage the MIDI and adjust the starting points, but it, it can be a little bit difficult to deal with, um, which is why I've provided both the splits and key switches so you can sort of work to the pros and cons of both. In terms of the layout of the template, everything has been organized in a way that makes it really easy to find things. So um, if we go to some of the brass patches here, we have the ensembles folder, which contains all of the ensemble patches. And you'll notice that everything has been tagged in a way that makes it really simple to understand. So at the far left, you have the section name, and then it will be followed by the actual um, instrument. In this case, it's the full ensemble. Uh, if you look at things like the trumpets and the horns, you'll see brass and then trumpet solo or trumpets for more than one. Um, same with all the other instruments. And then finally, you'll have a dash and then followed by the articulation type which in this case here for the trumpet solo is legato. And how I organize the articulations in instruments is always from the longest to the shortest then effects. So um, you'll find for the trumpets, for example, you'll have legatos at the top followed by sustains and then the short notes. And then if there are any effects, they will then follow at the bottom of the hierarchy before the next instrument. So then after the trumpets effects, it will go to horns, legato, 
sustains, shorts, and if there's effects, and then it will go to the next instrument, if that makes sense. Also, the instruments in each of the folders uh, for the strings, brass, and woodwinds have been organized in register. So towards the top of the folder, it will be the highest register instruments. Towards the bottom, it will go down to the lowest. So you can see here, trumpets are at the top, excluding ensembles, which I put at the very top above everything else. But um, it will then go trumpets, horns, trombones, and then things like trombones and chimbasso, tr bass trombones and tuba, X, Y, Z. And this is the same for all of the other instrument folders as well, such as the violins. Um, so again, violins one, legatos, shorts, and then effects and plucks, followed by you know the next instrument, so on and so forth. You get the idea. Before we move on, what I would like to do is to play the short cue for you because people do ask me all the time, can I hear it in, you know, hear the template working? Um, Although this is not a mixed, a pre-mixed template of any sort, it's basically just to get you up and running with the libraries really quickly and get all the boring technical stuff out of the way. Um, the only thing I have done for this short queue is to put a compressor, a tiny bit of compression, a little bit of EQ and a limiter on the master bus. Now for you guys, when you get this project, you won't have these on there. Uh, I've just basically done this for the sake of the video. And what you will have on your main stereo output is just a limiter, which will be the only plugin being used in a project. Everything else is at your discretion. Now let's go back to the main project window, we'll play this cue, and then we'll continue on with how everything's been routed and set up. So it's only a short little thing just to give you something to listen to and look at. But you can see here from the MIDI that everything is snapped to the grid. Um, there's only one, I think, MIDI note where it's a slight exception because I wanted it to come in a little bit differently. But you can see here everything's snapped to the grid. So that is the time delay working in action. And you don't have to spend time worrying too much about offsetting everything to sync it all up it will get you in the ballpark. And if there's any minor corrections you need to do, it's much less work involved when dealing with the MIDI. Now let's go ahead and flip over to the mixer because I want to show you um, how the routing has been set up for the library. So one of the main challenges when building templates and dealing with lots of instrument tracks is that they create a lot of audio channels in the mixer. And if you think about one instrument, for example, let's say the trumpets, um, if you were to load this as a key switch, it's fine because all the articulations are baked into the patch and you can switch between them using expression maps. But when you're building a split articulation template, um, each articulation lives on its own instrument track, on its own contact sampler. Obviously, this will create an audio channel for each of those articulations in the mixer. In total, in this project, there's 440 tracks, which means that if you wanted to mix this you would literally have 440 audio channels to look at in the mixer and scroll through. And that can be quite overwhelming for a lot of you that purchase my products that want to work in a more streamlined approach and make it easier to understand what you're doing so you don't feel like you're overwhelmed. Now to combat this, what I've actually done is create uh, instrument groups. So for example, all of the split articulations for the trumpet will have their own fader in the mixer and then if i want to you know control all the articulations for the six horn patches then i can do so with one fader which is really handy because it it simplifies the mixing environment and gives you that control as well and you have the ability to also add any inserts in if you want to process all of the articulations but the beauty of working in this method is that if there's a situation where you hear one of the articulations might have a little bit of noise it needs eqing out or there's something there with the level that's not quite right you can come up to the top tab here and use a bunch of different visibility configurations that I've created. So for example, if I want to look at all the audio channels that are active and not look at the groups, I can go to the audio channels view. And, and now we're looking at all of the individual audio channels for the instrument tracks. So if I suddenly decide that, okay, the trumpets, um, legato patch, 
I need to adjust it and then I want to adjust the trumpet spiccato patch volume or do some EQ, then you can do so from this view. It makes it much easier. And then when you're happy with those little minor things, you can go back to your main groups view and carry on working as normal and not have all that clutter there. In terms of routing, you'll see that we have the instrument groups here and then the instrument groups are routed to one of the purple faders over here, which are the master groups. So not only can we control the individual instruments, but we can also control an entire orchestral section. For example, all the brass are routed to the main brass output here, the main master group fader. So we can control all the brass, all the strings, all the winds, and all of the percussion. Now, in terms of reverb sense, I've set these up ready for you to work with. Um, all you need to do is insert your favorite reverb plugins on the reverb sends that are available. There are three for each instrument section, and these have been routed before the master group. So when you turn down the volume of the master group, it will also keep the reverb levels relative to how you've got them set here. It's really straightforward to work with these. All you do is when you, I don't know, for example, if I've got a, a short reverb on this one, medium on this one, long on this one, and I say, okay, I want my horns to have a short reverb. I can activate the send and dial in the amount of reverb I want to uh, send to this effects bus. Or if I want to add some of uh, this to the long reverb and blend it a bit, you can do so. It's really straightforward to work with. Now, going back over to the main project window, um, something that's actually quite useful for when you're working on large templates is making use of the built-in functionality of Cubase to hide things and show you things. Obviously, most of you will probably work like this. You'll activate your tracks and then you'll start scoring things out, but then you've got all this junk of unused um, instrument tracks that you're not really needing to have in sight, which can bog you down and you're doing a lot of like scrolling like this. So when working with any templates, I always recommend picking the patches that you want to use. And then once you've got the stuff that you're happy you're going to be using, you can use um, the visibility agents to hide all disabled tracks. So anything that's not activated in the project, you can use this to tidy up your view. And it's a really simple way of decluttering the work area. Now you can go one step further with this and say, you know, we've activated all this stuff, but we haven't really used it. There's no events on there. We could come back to the visibility agents and then show tracks with data and that will hide all of the stuff that hasn't got any events on. So then you can just basically drill into what you're working and focus on it. And if you want to come back to view everything, you can go to show all tracks like so. Just to wrap things up, I'm going to play the cue one more time. If you have any questions about the product, feel free to leave a comment in the description box below. Um, this does come with the expression maps as a downloadable file. You can store them anywhere. Don't worry about having to insert them on any of the articulation um, key switch patches. They've already been done for you. And also you'll get a bunch of track presets as well. So if you're modular template building, you've started a project and you think, right, okay, um, I could really do with the brass out of Cinebrass. I want to drag that into the project. Then what you can do is go to the track presets that are included. Um, you will need to store these in a specific place, by the way, that's included in the user manual. Be sure to read that as well before you use anything. Um, and here I can go, right, okay, uh, I want the trumpets. I'll drag and drop them in. And there you go, they'll appear. And what's good about this is that it retains the things like track delay. Um, so you don't have to worry about ever setting this up. So this makes it easier when you want to piece together a template using multiple different libraries. If you've got everything set up and you save it as a track preset, the only thing you will need to do after the fact is then route everything to your buses, X, Y, Z, how you want to work. Okay, so I'm going to play the cue and then we will part ways. Thank you for watching and also thank you to everyone uh, that purchases my templates. It really does help support what I do and without you, I won't be able to do it.